we're done. <clears throat> All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to another MLB The Show 21 stream here on Twitch. I'm NextJGGen24, and today we're going to be grinding out the Shane Bieber program. So this was his, I, I didn't even know this was a triple crown season for him, but this but this milestone card highlights his his uh, his performance during the shortened 2020 season. I don't know why we need another pitcher, but okay. Okay, I guess we're going to be doing this. So, looking at his stats real quick, uh, the velocity is down, so don't expect to do much with that four-seam fastball. Definitely looks like you're going to be doing a lot more with the knuckle curve, the slider, and the changeup. Um, hits and strikeouts per nine are pretty good. The... Walks and home runs per nine are a little bit concerning. I wish I would that would be a little higher, especially when you consider the fact that his ERA was basically under two. So you would hope that that would be a little bit higher, but I guess not. So, um, like I said, the velocity's not there. The break is there, which is you know what you would expect. Overall, I just don't see, I don't see too much of a use for this card. Um, it's just, like, everyone's still using Justin Verlander. They're using um, Edward Cabrera. They're using Jacob deGrom. Like, why, what would be the purpose of using Shane Bieber? You know? online i uh, i mean i'm only grinding him out because he's another player program so you know why not why not go for it so that's what we'll do we've got some moments here again this is pretty usual six moments all 42 uh all add up to each is seven so it adds up to 42 and then you just beat cleveland on all-star and you and you get the um, and you get the the mission done. So pretty straightforward. Uh, I will say though that I definitely prefer pitching moments over or pitcher player programs over the over batters because I I just think they're easier. All right. So looks like we're gonna start off on July twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Looks like we need to pitch two innings and get three strikeouts. All right, I think that could be done. But um, uh, just a couple things I do want to talk about, you know, not really related to baseball right now. Oh, they get him! I got him! Wow, at a boy Bieber. Anyway, um, so just a couple things. First of all. Holy shit, what the hell is going on with the NHL and the NBA and the NFL? All of a sudden, we're having these breakouts. These breakouts of COVID cases. It's like, holy shit. I mean, are we even going to have a season? Now, for, for the NBA, uh, I would say for the NFL, it might be a little bit easier to get past. It, it, it's insane with the NFL, though. They had, like, 37 COVID cases just yesterday. And then I was seeing on Twitter today, today, they expect to have over 25. Holy sh... Let it go foul. Never mind. He's going to catch it. Of course he is. I mean... What... what What's going on? The first baseman, Why are we having these COVID cases and, you know, yeah, why? Listen, guys, I am not going back to a world where there is no sports. 
I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going back to a world where if I want to see some action, if I want to see some sports action, I have to come on, I have to come on here and either watch people play or I have to go on YouTube and find networks like SMY or MSG. Excuse me. Do uh, do um, sim games. That, I do not want to live in that world again. That was boring as hell, and it definitely concerns me as a baseball fan because if we're having this much of an outbreak now, what's going to happen in in March or April when the baseball season gets underway? Are we going to have more COVID outbreaks? Are we going to have to go through these extra inning or double header seven inning games again? Okay, I really need to get a strike out here. Ooh. So, I, I really do hope that at some point we don't see these surges. But for the NFL, I think I think they'll be fine. It's definitely the NBA and the uh, and the um, the uh, or the NHL that I'm worried about, and especially with the Olympics coming up. You know, and who knows who knows what these athletes are gonna are gonna get while they're over in China. China claims to have their uh, to have their COVID outbreak under control, but I I'm sorry, I'm not trusting them, and I don't think anyone should really trust them right now. Oh, well, there we go. Guess I just got banned from Twitch or, or Twitch in China. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I am worried about the health and the well-being of not just these hockey athletes, but athletes that are competing in the Olympics. The batter number 50. You know, the rules for, uh, apparently the rules are way stricter over there when it comes to COVID. From what I understand, so if you get it, <laughs> good luck. Ah, uh, these stupid ass players stealing, bunting to get hits and everything. So I, I am legitimately concerned because if we're having an outbreak now, outbreak now, who knows what happens over in China? So. I, I do hope that eventually we do get it under control. Because uh, I, I really do want to see seasons continue. I'd rather not see these seasons get put off again and then the MLB season gets, it gets delayed. I mean, it, it might get delayed because of the lockout, but that has nothing to do with COVID. You know, but I don't want the delay there. The MLB The Show 20 was extremely boring, especially before we finally got the season underway. Strike three, sit down. Now, I believe that I have now batting the, pitcher, Shane. the strikeouts. So... Now all I gotta just do is pitch this inning. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, again, I'm just praying that there is no, uh, there isn't another 
uh, put off or pause on these on the NBA and NFL and NHL seasons. You got him? Holy shit. So, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully we do get this surge under control. And then we can get back to playing some sports. Um, as for, uh, well, another thing I do want to address, I mean... I thought the Jets were having a turmoil season, but I did not realize how bad it was for the Jaguars. Like, and I actually meant to address this on on uh, yesterday in last night's stream. I meant to do that. Strike three, sit down. But it completely slipped my mind because I just ended up talking about uh, food and math <laughs> and relationships and all that shit. But this is really, really serious. Like, I mean, I have my doubts about Urban Meyer being a good head coach for the Twit or. Uh, the Jaguars. I mean, I figured it was going to be something that was going to be rough, but holy hell. Telling his staff that he's a winner and they're losers? Look, I don't care what Urban Meyer accomplished in, in college football. I don't care. He, can, he could have been like Nick Saban. And he ain't was basically Nick Saban winning all those championships with Florida and, and those national championships with Florida and with um, and with Ohio State so he was basically Nick Saban and then he comes to the NFL and he starts demanding his coaches produce their resumes explain to him how they're not losers I'm sorry, Urban, but didn't you hire these people? Wasn't it your coaching staff? Didn't you hire these guys? So now all of a sudden you think they're losers? I mean, that is extremely pitiful. I don't care what you accomplished in college football. You're in the NFL. It's a whole different ball game. And if you don't believe me, just go ask Nick Saban. He tried his luck in the in the NFL with the Miami Dolphins, and you could argue that that wasn't the best Dolphins team to run with at the time. But that's on the coach to figure something out and try to make it work. And plain and simple, Nick Saban didn't do it. That doesn't take away from him being a great college football coach. Certainly not. I, as much as I don't like to admit it, Nick Saban is one of the greatest college football coaches that we're seeing today. He really is. And that, and I'm not even thinking about what he did in the NFL. Because to me, that should have no impact on him as a coach at the collegiate level. He's found a hell of a lot more success there than he did in the NFL. So for Urban Meyer to, to, to get this belief in his head that somehow he's um, better than his coaching staff, even though this is, this is his first year with, with the Jaguars... To me, that shows arrogance. Arrogant. I kind of had a feeling he was going to be arrogant. I just didn't think he would be this arrogant. I would have hoped that maybe... Go, uh, obviously, the Jaguars were not going to have a winning season. Trevor Lawrence was not turning around that team. Just like Zach Wilson wasn't going to turn around the Jets. 
okay? And anyone who said that they expected the Jaguars to be a winning team are either not paying attention to the NFL or they are just really, really, what's the word? Hopeful. But it's foolish hope. The Jaguars were always going to have a bad season. That doesn't mean that Urban Meyer has the right to call his coaching staff losers. These are your men, Urban. These are your coaches that you picked, you hired, and you're telling, and you're now saying to them, you want this, you want them, you're calling them losers? If they're losers, you're a loser as well. In fact, I think that this even makes him a bigger loser. So, Urban Meyer, shut up. And just be, uh, you know, and if you don't like the NFL, guess what? There's the door. Jaguars can hire another coach. Could have kept your, uh, could have kept your, your character intact by not, by not taking a job in the NFL. He could have, he could have saved an analyst. Hey, Gray. Yeah, and the Jets lose another week, so yay! Oh my god, it was especially worse for the Jets. So, so much worse for the Jets. I mean, you you see that bounce pass that Wilson tried to uh, tried to throw to, um, I, I forget what the receiver uh, who the receiver was. It might have been it might have been Johnson out of the backfield, and then they tried to run with it. They tried to act like that was a catch. Like, are you stupid? And we're all happy that the Jets lose every week, too. That exists. The right fielder, Victor Rahab. Is it foul? Oh, it's fair. So, believe me, man, we're in the same camp, and the Lions and the Jets are never going to get better. The pitcher. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. You you think that the that those teams, just when you think those teams hit rock bottom, they somehow go even lower. They somehow dig themselves further to the center of the earth. Somehow. It, 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 it is pitiful. It is pitiful to watch this team and watch these teams. In fact, that's what I've resolved to do at this point, Bray. I've resolved never to never to watch the Jets for the rest of the season. I don't care. I really don't. So, as a Jet fan, I'm going back into hibernation, and I'll just wake up whenever they show that they can be winners. Because right now, they're losers. And I swear to God, if the Jets somehow make, like, hundreds of millions of dollars this year, I'm going to go on a rant on this, because that is ridiculous. The Jets should not be making any money this year. And the and if they are, if they somehow turn a profit, it's pitiful. It's it's absolutely pitiful. But again, that goes back to you know it goes back to my point about the NFL as a whole. That these teams, they could, they could be like, uh, they could be like the 2000, what was it, 2007 Detroit Lions that went winless the entire season, right? 
Ray, you would know this. The Lions win winless in 07, correct? Either way, that team, that team made, uh, made, close, made close to $200 million that season, according to Statista. Like, how crazy is that? How crazy is that? That uh, is that they're able to still turn a profit, even though they had uh, uh, the worst season in NFL history. Strike three, sit down. How many more strikeouts do I need? I need three more. There's too much money in the NFL at this point that these owners they couldn't give a rat's ass. They'll just take their profit. And they're not gonna they're not gonna go for anyone that's gonna make the team better. You know, obviously winning makes more profit, but if they know that they can still turn a profit even by throwing out a losing team, they do it. And we're all the suckers. We are all suckers for it. Investing in tickets, investing in jerseys, in In, uh, you know, I, I mean, we can't do anything about the, the, about the game being on, like, CBS or Fox or anything. That's TV contract money. It's just, like, I don't understand. The highlight of the Jets season is clearly going to be that 400-yard game by by Mike White. That's going to be it. And somehow that's going to be enough to keep Jeff fans happy. It's pretty sad. It is a sad state of affairs for Jet fans, for the Lions. I actually just saw um, a rating or, or some kind of a uh, uh, some kind of a graphic that they were going over the most loyal fan bases in all the NFL. Somehow, and I'm not joking about this, somehow the Jets are 21st. Somehow. They are, uh, they, uh, apparently their fan base is much more loyal than 11 other teams one of those being the Buffalo Bills, who, if you remember from earlier this year, their fans outnumbered Jet fans at MetLife Stadium. I, 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 I seriously am having a hard time believing this. If anything, I would expect Jet fans to be maybe, maybe 30, uh, like 31st, the highest. 31st because I think that there's one team that's, that has a more non-loyal fan base than the Jets do, and that's the Houston Texans. But 21st? Better than the Bills? My God. That is shocking. Batting second, the third baseman, number 27. I mean, do I consider myself a loyal uh, Jets fan? I consider myself a cynical fan. A very cynical fan. Strike three, sit down. But I don't consider myself loyal. Not until this team proves that it can win. So I guess I really haven't been loyal to the Jets since 2015.
it was so great when I used to work overnights on Saturday night. Because when I did that, when I, um, when I did that, it meant I slept through Sunday, didn't wake up until the evening, till 5. Which basically meant that any game from the Jets that was on the East Coast, or even the, or even in the Central, I missed it. And then even when they were uh, on the West Coast, even when they were on the West Coast, it just, I didn't even, I was, I had already woken up way too late to tune into the game, so I didn't even watch it then. The only, the only time that I would be forced to watch a Jets game was if it was a Sunday night football game. Which I actually, I can't even remember the last time the Jets were even on Sunday night. No! I know they were, uh, the most recent, they were on, um... I know they were recently on Monday Night Football. They were on ESPN. Maybe NBC is smart. I mean, why would they why would they have the Jets on? Actually, it's not even NBC. It's the NFL. They know how terrible the Jets are, so they're like, "The hell with this. We're not we're not going to make our primetime game uh, featuring the Jets. Not when they suck." Because half the audience would just tune out after the first quarter. So, smart on the NFL for not giving the Jets any Sunday night football games. I can't even remember. Uh, yeah, I can't even remember when the last time was that the Jets were on Sunday night football. Actually, that might be interesting to look up. Hold on. Let me get through Salvador Perez here, and then we'll and then I'll take a look. Thursday night football is also pretty common. I think, I think it was uh, actually it was earlier this year where the Jets were on with the Colts. That was right after the Mike White game. Yeah, because Mike White got hurt. In that game, and they had to go to their to um, Johnson as their quarterback. So let's see. Last time, last time, oops, Jets were on Sunday Night Football. Let's see. Hold on, this might be good right here. So, the last, oh wait, that's not up to date. Yeah, that's not up to date. So, although I would believe it if they told me that the Jets last Sunday night football appearance was in 2012. That would certainly make sense. But it, it has to be... Maybe they made another appearance after that. Let's see. Batting six. The center fielder. Michael A. Taylor. And for these purposes, and by the way, for 
for purposes, I'm not referring to the Thursday, the Thursday night uh, Thanksgiving NBC broadcast as a Sunday night football game. Obviously, let's see. Yeah, so this season the Jets weren't even on. Not it was definitely not this season. It wasn't last season, so not twenty twenty. Nice. Strike three, sit down. Come on. We just need we just need to get two more outs. Strike three, sit down. Let's go. One more. I swear to god if Jacob Tunis uh gets a hit here, th this is probably gonna be one of the worst ways to lose a moment. Strike three, sit down. All right, cool. That's done. Uh, let's see. So, Jets, 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 Jets. Not in 2019, so we're already going on three seasons. Three seasons that the Jets have gone without making an appearance on Sunday Night Football. Okay, make it four seasons. 2018, nothing. Twenty seventeen. So now we're on five seasons. Twenty sixteen, nothing. And I'm very doubtful that I'm gonna see a jet, uh, the Jets appear in twenty fifteen, yeah, because the Reddit already confirmed that. And they had nothing, I believe, in twenty fourteen. So this is unbelievable. This is truly, truly unbelievable. And again, I'm not counting. So it wasn't even 2012. You have to go all the way back. You have to go all the way back to 2011. For the last time that the Jets even appeared on Sunday Night Football. And that was a 37 to 16 loss against the New England Patriots. Actually, they appeared three times on Sunday Night Football that that season. They appeared against the Dallas Cowboys 
which said one that was the 10th anniversary of 9-11. The third baseman. They won that 27 to 24. They lost to the Baltimore or or Baltimore Ravens. 34 to 17 on October 2nd of that year and then they lost to the New England Patriots on November 13th. The right field. Max Kepler. So over a decade, over 10 seasons since the Jets have last appeared on Sunday Night Football. The NFL and NBC clearly knew that the Jets were not going to be good. Hence why they haven't even put them on for a Sunday Night Football game. And again, that's disregarding... Any uh, any Buxton. Thursday night games that were on NBC, you know, for like Thanksgiving or whatever. But 2011, guys, 2011, that was the last time the Jets even appeared on Sunday Night Football. So they've been on Monday Night Football, they've been on... Thursday night football, but they have not been on Sunday night football in a long time. My God. I, I, I'm shocked, but at the same time, at the same time, I can't be surprised. Which I know is basically canceling each other out. It doesn't make much sense really because how can I say I'm shocked but not surprised I expected it but it's still shocking to me pitiful absolutely pitiful by the Jets the NFL knows how much of an embarrassment that franchise is so they're keeping them off of Sunday night primetime Hey, Eric boy, what's up? Welcome back. How you doing? But I'm done with my football rant. Clearly, clearly the point I was trying to make was the Jets are terrible. So terrible that the NFL doesn't even want them on Sunday Night Football. NBC doesn't want them on Sunday Night Football. Leading off for the Twins, the shortstop, Andrelton Simmons. Uh, where am I at? Oh, I've got my strikeouts. Okay, so now I just need to pitch three. In, uh, I just need to get two more outs, and then we're done with this. Or at least this moment. Strike three, sit down. Batting nuts. No pitcher. Strike three, sit out. Oh, I have to pitch. Oh, I have to pitch five innings. Sorry, I missed. 
I did not calculate, you know, any uh, additional innings. I thought when it said three, it meant, you know, you got to pitch three innings. Clearly, I was wrong. It's five total innings. How's my day going? It's going all right. It's going all right. You know, another day, another, another stream. I like to say it's another dollar, but that's just a lie. Strike three, sit down. The center field, number 25. Byron. Yeah, I know, man. You've been... I, I mean, it is what it is. You don't have to be here. If you can't be here, I'm not going to be all upset. I'm not going to be like, what the? where the fuck have you been? You know, you abandoned me. You're not part of this community anymore. No, 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 no. No. I understand that people have lives. Hell, I have a life. So, believe me, I'm not going to get all pissed just because... You, you don't come in for a while. I mean, there are people that have not been here in months. In months. I mean, yeah, they check in periodically, but they, but like in terms of them actually staying, it's been a while. So, but I'm not going to get pissed over anyone not being in the stream. If you're in here, great. If you're not, I understand. Honestly, it's tough to stream MLB The Show at this point of the year. I mean, literally, like, I, I have nothing planned for tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm probably just going to go back to my Super Fracturing, um series that I'm doing with the Mets because now I got I, I get well do I have to include Francisco Alvarez I mean I'm already working on Gary Carter and I've already got Piazza super fractured so do I really need to have Alvarez there hmm Strike three, sit down. And you know what else is crazy, guys? Because I literally just saw this. MLB, I, I think um, MLB on Fox or somebody was posted about this. In 19, on this day in 1999, this is crazy. Ken Griffey Jr., vetoed a trade that the Mariners would send him to the Mets for Ray Ordonez, uh Bernice, I think I think I saw. Here, I have the I have the tweet on my on my profile here. Because I retweeted it and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, so this day in Mets history Ken Griffey Jr., and actually it was the 13th, so it was technically yesterday. But this is really crazy. He vetoed a trade to the Mets that would have sent Armando uh, Benitez, Roger Cedeno, and Oct Octavio Dotel to the Mariners for Ken Griffey Jr. And he vetoed that. And basically the idea was, what if Griffey had been on the Mets? What if he hadn't vetoed that? Because you guys have to remember that the following season, 2000, is when the Mets went to the World Series. So they made it to the World Series without Griffey Jr. Imagine if they had him. Oh my God, that would not have been such a quick series. I, I think the Yankees swept the Mets in that series. But, I mean, like, 
The thing that there could have, it could have been Ken Griffey Jr. and Mike Piazza, two guys who went into the Hall of Fame in the same class together. They could have been on the same team. They could have been teammates, even if it was only for one season. Oh my God! Just thinking about that. The first baseman, Go. Why did that not happen? I know Griffey Jr. had some beat with the Yankees in terms of, uh, you know, is they said something to uh, some Yankees player or coach said something derogatory about his father. So basically he was like then and there, I'm not playing for the Yankees. But I didn't think that that stretched to the Mets too. I guess he really didn't like New York. But that's a shame because, I mean, he could have had a World Series. Actually, did he have one when he was on the White Sox? Was he on the White Sox or no? Because he was still on the Reds at the at the time that the White Sox won the World Series. Oh well. I guess that was it. Wait, I didn't even pitch two innings. So what happened? Did I just like? What happened there? Why did I fail that moment? I mean, I'm telling you, e e even if I wasn't really paying attention to baseball at that time, I would have heard if, if that trade had gone through and the Mets went on to win the World Series in 2000, oh my God, I would have heard about it for day, uh, for years from my father and my sister. That's like... That's really crazy to think that Griffey Jr. and Mike Piazza could have been on the same team. It really is crazy. I, I'm just like, I'm in awe right now that I even know that. And of course, it was before, it was before the Wilpons even took control of the Mets once they got majority ownership. Of course, it was before. It had to be before. But I mean, everyone talks about that trade to get Mike Piazza to the Mets from the Marlins after he, after he was traded to them from the Dodgers. But I'm telling you, Steve Phelps, uh, Steve Phelps, uh, Steve, yeah, Steve Phelps, if he had pulled off that trade for Griffey Jr., I swear to God, he'd be the he'd be the most brilliant general manager in Mets history. I mean, I kind of think he is already, considering that he traded for Piazza. But if he were to get Griffey Jr. too, holy shit, erect an, a, a statue of that man in in front of Shade Stadium and in front of City Field because we would have never had another general manager like Steve Phelps. Oh my God. I, I, I kind of hate that I, that I know this information, that I know. What's up, Chuck? How are ya? What's going on with your with your NHL? How come so many players are getting uh, COVID? What's going on with that, man?
Are we gonna have another lockout season of that? Okay, no problem. I I appreciate that. I appreciate you stopping by. No problem. Have fun with your nephew. Good. I do have my strikeouts with Beeper, so now I just. Now I just need the out, and there's the moments. Okay, so that's it for the Shane Bieber moments. Now it's just a matter of of uh, do, uh, beating the Indians on All-Star. Let me just make sure I have my, my, or the right lineup. Okay. All right, I think we're good. I think I'm ready to go ahead and take on the Indians. Of course, the last year that I'll be saying, calling them the Indians, because next year I'm going to have to call them the Guardians. Mini sick with him trying to get him. Good. Good. Get him in while they're young now. What, what team are you going to have them like? Are you going to... Uh, I I know that you play with the uh, Winnipeg Jets' um, jerseys a lot, so are you like a fan of the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah. Even Story Speed couldn't beat that out. Get through. Hell yeah, let's go, Simeon. Batting third, the center fielder, number seven, Mickey Mantle. Wow, I really can't believe that the Indians are worried about Simeon stealing. I know he's got 77 speed, but that's not exactly enticing me to go ahead and steal with them. So, I, I just, it, it really is crazy to think that at one point in the Mets history, not only would they have had Mike Piazza, not only did they have Mike Piazza, but they also could have had freaking freaking uh, Ken Griffey Jr. If, if Jr. had not vetoed that trade. I mean, Griffey's gonna do, uh, gonna do him. So, I mean, it's like that was his choice, and maybe he saw something with the Mets that that maybe I'm not seeing. But what I see is that the following season, the Mets went to the World Series. Now, granted, the Mariners not long. After that, I don't. Uh, when did Griffey? I think Griffey got traded to the Reds, um, two thousand two. Go 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 go! Everyone's going home. Or well, not everyone, but let's see. Ken Griffey Jr. Here we go. He played, okay, so... Oh, so he... Okay, so he wasn't even on the Mariners when they did have their best season with 101 wins or whatever it was. Yeah, and he wasn't even on the White Sox when they did win the World Series. Okay. I mean, that's why I look up this information. I mean, I wasn't sure. So, wow. So Griffey never won a World Series. And he could have been part of one. He could have been part of one if he had been with the Mets. 
But I guess that's that is what it is. He's still a Hall of Famer. The fact that he didn't win a World Series doesn't make him a Hall of Famer. Or the fact that he didn't win a World Series doesn't exclude him from the from the Hall of Fame. I'm just saying, like, he could have had a World Series. He could have. The right fielder, number two. But I mean, what was... I, I guess, what was him... I mean, how would he have known that the Mets were going to go on that World Series run? I mean, we knew the Mets were... Oh my god, what is up with these Indians? They cannot field. Wow, this is, like, surprising. Alright, that's gonna get... Oh, so now they actually want to field. They're willing to let ground balls or fly balls drop and get by them and ground balls get by them, but when it comes to robbing extra base hits off the wall, oh yeah, they're all they're gonna be they're gonna be gold glovers. Wow. I mean I I, I really can't stop thinking about it. Like what could have been? If Ken Griffey Jr. had played for the Mets. That and the, and, and seven. the other part too, he could have kept his number 24, I believe. Because 24 is not retired by the um, by the Mets. Let's see. Cincinnati Reds, what are their retired numbers? Retired numbers. Yeah, they have, uh, they have 24 retired. So, if Griffey had gone to New York, he could have kept his number 24. You know, it could have been like a situation with Piazza, where Piazza goes to the Mets, and he got, and even though John Franco had been with the team a lot longer, Franco gave Piazza his his, his number thirty one. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know, but it's all history, so it's easy to look back and say, well, if this could have happened, maybe the Mets would have won the World Series, or if this has happened, you know, blah, blah, blah. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I always say. I mean, I can, if I really want Griffey on, on the Mets, what I could do is I could play some MVP Baseball 2004 or 5 and just do a fantasy draft and have Piazza and Griffey on the same, on the same team. What's up here? Oh, Steph Curry set the, set the record for, hold on. Set the three-point record previously held by Ray Allen. So, congrats to Seth Curry. Not a shock, honestly. Like, I think people knew that was going to happen. Steph Curry 
is the greatest shooter of our time right now. I mean, I grew up watching Ray Allen, and Ray Allen is fantastic. But Steph Curry, there, there's no stopping him. Steph Curry is just a marksman from, from deep. So congrats to him on the record, and uh, may he have many more threes. And may we see even more uh, players surpass Allen and sh of this generation. I think we could. Because it's not just Steph Curry. You know? Durant can shoot threes. Harden can shoot threes. There's a lot of people who could shoot. And uh, Clay Thompson can shoot even. So, I, I'm surprised the second half of the Splash Brothers isn't up there. At a boy mantle. Driving in semi and hell yeah. Now back. The left view. Tyler. Oh, oh that was the pitch. That was it right there. should have never been swung at. But it's okay. We got the fourth run, so it's all good. You know, also beating by beating the um, Cleveland Indians on All-Star, what I'm also doing is I'm gaining the X or, or the program, or, you know, getting the plus five in the team affinity program for the central. And that would put me at 110, so I think I get to open up another uh, pack once I'm done with this. Another central team affinity pack. AL central, that is. Now couldn't get him on that? Dang. Oh, you know what I forgot to do yesterday, guys? I, I got so flustered by the stream crashing and everything that I completely forgot to see if I could build a super fractured lineup. So I'm going to have to test that. I think I can, honestly. Strike three, sit down. Batting seven, the second baseman, Andres Jimenez. Strike three, sit down. First baseman, Joey Votto. A boy Votto.
Ooh, nice hit. Over his head? No. Dang. Good hit. Just great fielding there. Oh, why was I even still aiming? I was in a two strike count. Duh. All right, well, whatever. Leading off for the Indians, the catcher, Roberto. Better not start leaving pitches up. Otherwise, we're going to have to have a serious, or, or we're going to have to seriously consider taking them out. I know I don't have any relievers that are super fractured, but I do know I have some starting pitchers that are super fractured, and I also know I have fielders that are super fractured as well. So I'm going to have to, yeah, I, I think once I'm done with this game, I'll do the super fractor team build and we'll see how that goes. Nice. Strike three, sit down. The batter, number one, shortstop, Javier Rosario. Well, thank God that didn't hit the bat. They hit the back, because that would have gotten by Votto. I think once I'm done with this, once I'm done with this uh, this game here, because I'm going to have a little bit of time, maybe I'll go um, pick up on what I what I was doing in the Central Conquest map. What's up, Pitcher CM? How you doing tonight? Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. Attaboy, Cliff Lee. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Thanks. Thanks for asking. We're just doing the uh, Shane Bieber uh, player program right now. I've done all the moments, so all I really need to do is just is just beat the Indians here, and then I I, I saw the event. I, I saw what the event. Uh, 
what the event rewards are. And I can tell you, that Trey Turner definitely piques my interest. So, I guess we can give it a shot. I mean, worst comes to worst, if I'm absolutely terrible in it, then I just go... Then I just go to the Conquest map. I'm just not good online. You know, Battle Royale, Ranked Seasons, Events... Oh, you're two vouchers away. Nice. Which voucher did you complete? You finished the monthly award. See? I told you you'd get those done. Yeah, those are relatively easy. I, I think... Signature is going to be a bit of a it, it is going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, there are definitely a few player programs and evolution programs that you can do that would get you the uh, that would get you those signature programs, but you're going to have to go through the daily moments to do it. What a grand slam by freaking Mickey Mantle! And that and the PCI wasn't even on it; it was underneath it. So that's where, finally, the game ruled in my favor. But that Trey Turner card is definitely interesting. And I'm doing events for more subs, and I want to put Trey at sort in. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know how that Trey Turner card is gonna is gonna be, but honestly, if it's if it's even better than his uh than his card for month, yeah, 98. That card is insane, dude. That card is insane, but I'm pretty sure you already know that. So if that if the card if that 99 is even better, holy shit! So we'll give events a try. I'm not guaranteeing anything though, because like I said, I, I, I really stink online. But that's awesome that you have nine wins. What is Trey Turner at? Like what what's his mu is he the fifteen event reward? Is he or what? Because I haven't even checked that out yet. Twenty-five? Oh, shit. Of course they make him the twenty-five reward. How many subs? Uh... So I have close to 800,000 because I put in a buy order for Mike Trout. Uh, I put a 1 million stub buy order for him. So before that, I had 1.7 million. Yeah, 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 no doubt. No doubt. And I'm sure I'm going to do that eventually. In fact, I might just wait even till uh, next week to put that buy order in because it'll likely go down by then. Everyone's going to have them. 
But I'd rather just try and grind grind them out first. You know? Because grinding is free for me. So I don't even have to waste any more... Uh, so I don't have to waste more stubs. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the worst thing that happens, I don't get a single win in the event and I just buy him. But I tell you what, I'm really happy with that with that 98 overall <laughs> Trey Turner. So for the Indians. And not to mention my my uh, my play with with shortstops, team finest shortstops like Correa and um, who's the other shortstop? There are two from. There are two shortstops. There's Correa, and I'm forgetting the other one that you can earn through the team affinity grind. Tatis, yes, thank you. Tatis. Both of them actually suck for me. Or they stunk for me when I played online with them. So, you know, I, I hope Turner turns out better. But so far I'm 0 for 2 on shortstops. On Team Finest shortstops. Actually, really the only one that I can say that I truly enjoy using um, is Shading Martinez. I mean, that card absolutely rakes for me on online. Yeah. Yeah, JD. Uh-oh. I, I don't know. Maybe it's his swing. I don't know. But I struggle with that Juan Soto card. I really do. Uh, another one that uh, another one that you might be surprised I do well with. Kyle Tucker. If I'm bringing him off the bench, that is. If I'm bringing Tucker off the bench, he's he he rakes for me. But if I have him playing for me, he he's not so good. Strike three, sit out. But maybe what I have to do is get these cards up to um, P5, and then maybe they'll actually be better for me. Because all their stats will be juice once they're P5. I don't know. It's going to take a while, though. That That's what I'll say, is it's going to take a while. Yeah, that's gone. Add a boy, Trevor's story. Months into this game, and Trevor's story is still one of my best hitting short slaps. It's just too bad Trey Turner is much, much, much better. Boy, Mickey. Now that there you go, nice. Tyler. Oh, yeah, I I can tell you. I mean, for me personally, I think this mantle card is much better than it was from last year. Last year, I absolutely struggled with ninety nine mantle. Not offline, but online. 
But then again, I also struggled with 99 Trout, too. So. But that 99 Griffey, I'm excited to try out. I just have to get... I just have to finish with, uh... I just have to finish with Mantle first. You suck with 99 Trout? Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I mean... Well, wait, so you already have him? You grinded ranked seasons and you got up to the World Series or you got 30 wins to get him? I mean, dude, God bless you for being able to do that because when that 99 Trout was announced, oh my God, the tryhards came out. And I was not interested in grinding out 99 Griffey. Or 99, I'm sorry, 99 Trout. The catcher, number 55. Roberto Perez. Hold on. Got something here. Oh. Trade, uh, trade Wingo. Great. Thank you. Not like I really care. Football season's over for me. No way that gets out. No way. Yes. I do have Griffey. I'm just not using him right now because I'm working on Mantle. I'm working on trying to super frack their mantle. Mantle's at tier four, so I don't have that much longer to go with him. Once he's super fractured, then Griffey is going to be in center. So, uh, Nick Cassianos, the 97 overall, because I just hit so well with him. I really do. That Castellanos card is one of my favorites. And then um, in left, I have the monthly awards Tyler O'Neill. Tyler O'Neill is at tier three, and so is Castellanos. So they're not they're not going anywhere anytime soon. It has to be it has to be Longoria or not Longoria. It has to be Mantle that I finish up on before I put Griffey in the outfield. Although, if he keeps hitting Grand Slam home runs, you know, Griffey will get there pretty soon. And also, if you consider the fact that I'm doing this on All-Star as well, so the multiplier is up to 1.3. And he's getting multiple at-bats as well. So I would not, I would honestly be surprised if he earned less than 100 XP for this game alone with the grand slam that he had, not to mention all the all the hits that he's had in this game in addition to it. So Mantle is not far off, I I believe. It's just it's gonna take a lot of grinding. And maybe even the event will help me. Because it sounds like that we can put him in the in the event. So you know, even if I just get a few, even if I just get a few hits with Mantle on the event, considering it's on All Star or Hall of Fame, whichever one, and and the multiplier for events for online is 1.5, so easily right there, that's a 1.5. Uh, that's a 1.4 multiplier. Oh, it's on All Star. Okay, so yeah, it's 1.4. Hey, Kai, what's up? How you doing? Now, 
The multipliers definitely help. Doing good? I'm doing all right. Doing all right? We're just grinding out the Shane Bieber uh, program here. We're almost done. I finished up on the moment. So now I just need to... Um, now I just need to beat the Indians. Which, as you can see, I'm already doing. So barring any major setback by Cliff Lee... I think I've got this one in the ba in the bag. Not yet, not yet. They are still the Indians until until 2022. But yes, eventually next year I'm gonna have to get used to the fact that I can no longer call them the Indians. I have to call them the Guardians. Yeah, nobody cares about the seventh inning stretch. Sorry. Let's just get this game over with. Boba? Boba, who, who are you talking about? Oh, bubble tea? Uh, no. No, I'm a straight soda guy. So you're, you're not really going to get me to drink tea. I used to drink iced tea. I used to drink that when I was younger, but then my dad stopped buying it, so it kind of fell out of my taste. Sprite McDonald's hits differently. Hmm. I'm I'm more of a Coke guy. I'm more of a Coke guy. I mean Sprite. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy uh, Sprite every now and then. Strike three, sit down. But but for me, it's all about Coca Cola. And by the way, I actually I actually like both uh, Coca Cola and Pepsi. I just find I just find that Coca Cola is much better because I believe it's a lot stronger. Pepsi is just very soft, very very soft. It's it, it's fine, but I mean, if you put a gun to my head and force me to choose between Coke and Pepsi. I'm telling you that I'm going to choose Coke 10 times out of 10. I mean, I have a channel reward that, that says everything goes better with Coke. Because everything does go better with Coke. At a boy O'Neill. You know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to try for the triple. Let's go, Tyler O'Neill. 99 speed. Love it. Ugh. Ugh. I can't stand root beer. I hate it. Ugh. Ah, uh, cream soda. Ah, uh, 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 that just made me gag. Ugh. Uh, even that taste. Oh God. I mean, that's fine for people to like it, but me personally, I can't stand it. I can't stand root beer. Ugh. I feel like I need to wash my mouth out with soap. 
after drinking a root beer. At a boy Votto. Top five favorite drinks, me personally. So, Coke and Pepsi. Oh, you're saying. Oh, um, so Coke and Pepsi are number one and two. Uh. Oh, you're saying group beers in your top five. Oh, I thought you were asking me, like, what uh, what are my top five sodas? Um, yeah, that's... Uh, okay, so, like I said, Pepsi, uh, Coke and Pepsi are number one and two. Um, uh, trying to think. Hold on. What? Why not try to turn the double play? You could have had Vado. Anyway. Uh, so, Coke and Pepsi. Um, Fanta. Definitely Fanta. Orange Fanta. Orange Fanta. Uh, give me Sprite. And then, uh, what would be my fifth? Milk? Alright. Hey, that's, uh, I wish I built, uh, I wish I drank milk more. But it's definitely not in my top five. Um, And then I guess Sore Brand Cola would be, and, and what I mean by Store Brand is like Weiss or Shoprite or basically the supermarkets that have their own brand of cola. So yeah, that would be my top five. I mean, would you consider Powerade too? Like, would you consider Powerades or no? Because that's a Coke product. If it, if you do count Powerades, then replace store brand store brand cola with Powerade. Gatorade is top five. Uh, I I I like some of their flavors, not all of them. I definitely don't like the icy, icy blue or the cool, icy glacier or the cool blue, um, Gatorades, I think those are nasty. The lime green Gatorades are also disgusting. The blues are the best. Not Gatorades. Not in my opinion, at least. Powerades, I absolutely agree. Gatorades, no. Absolutely not. I don't agree. The Fruit Punch, the, uh, the Lemon Lime. White, oh, ugh. White, white Gatorades? No, that's even, yeah, add that to another... Gatorade product that I don't I don't drink. Orange Crush is the best. Really? Your attention, please. Isn't Orange Crush a product of Pepsi? I know Fanta is Coke, so I think Orange Crush is is Pepsi. You're not sure? Oh, okay. Whatever. Um, for the most part, most beverages, most beverages are Coke or Pepsi. So, uh, Coke makes like fa Fanta, Sprite, Powerade, uh, Dr. Pepper is a Coke product. 
And then for and then for Pepsi, they have Gatorade, they have um, Mountain Dew, they have uh, I guess Orange Crush, and also the root beer that you were talking about. It's like I, I think it's A and W's root beer. So I, I don't think Coke has a has a root beer. I, I I think the closest that they have is Dr Pepper to root beer. But for the most part, their their most of the beverages are 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 by um, Pepsi or Coke. Even water is, uh, even water is a product as water uh, or Coke and Pepsi have, um, even Coke and Pepsi have water products. Dasani, I believe, is, is, uh, Pepsi, and then, or, or, no, 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 I'm sorry. Dasani is Coke, I believe. And then I think... Uh, Poland Springs might be different. Okay, water product made by Pepsi. Made by Pepsi. Oops. Aquafina. Okay, so Aquafina is made by Pepsi. And then Coke, I believe, is Dasani. Yeah, the Sonic. That's what I thought. Okay. And then Poland Springs, I think, is made by a separate company. What do you mean? Why do you say you're so bad? Strike three, sit down. Game over. At a boy, Lee. Going nine innings with 17 strikeouts. Hell yeah. Mantle with a home run, a double, a single, and five RBIs. Not to mention two runs. I have to check his progress after this to see where he stands. Yeah, Kitchen saying. AL Central, which I thought, uh, that's obviously supposed to be Shane Bieber. I got, you got Mookie? Nice, man. That Mookie card, I mean, I don't do well with it, but that Mookie card is, you know, is insane. See, just like I told you, Mantle, 150 XP, uh, it's still a bit of ways, actually, he's still a bit of ways. Semyon is like really, really close. So Semyon will likely be the next card that we parallel XP. All right, give me, let me throw in Bieber here. And I was at 130, so 50. Ooh, we got over here. Awesome. I don't, I, I don't know, like. Which card I'm going to go with here. Either way, these are just bench bats in my opinion. These these cards right here are just all bench bats. I would never put Josh Bell in at first. I would never put uh, Reese Hoskins in left. And I'm certainly not going to put Charlie Blackman in in right. So...
Okay, so Dave Parker is at, is at 15 wins, Machado's at 21, and Trey Turner's at 25. Got it. I'll get to that in a second. But I got some packs to open up here. A shit ton of packs. Holy shit. Alright, give me this first. No, believe me, that Trey Turner card looks like a freaking beast. So, Eric Boy, I think that's worth um, going after. I've heard a lot of people say good things about this Jorge Polanco card, so I want to give him a shot. Alright, looks like we're going to do a quick pack opening. See if we get anything. I got to get my sub count back up to a million, so... It kind of feels weird knowing that it's it's under uh, it's under a million. I can't even remember the last time that my stub count was under a million. Probably when I bought uh, Billy Wagner. That's probably the last time that I uh, I had my stub count over under a million. Oh, God, the neighbor's dogs are going nuts. Shit. Actually, that sounds like my dog. Yep, it's my dog. Great. Great, that's fantastic. Shut the hell up! Alright, so, so far I'm not really getting anything in these, uh, in these packs. Just made it because they jammed him. <laughs> well, hey, a win's a win. The hell with how it, how it happens. Just take it. Yeah, I have a lot of West player uh, NL West players that I need to sell. Ten mm. percent. That would leave me at five hundred, so I'm better off just like selling. No. Okay. Come on, where are them diamonds? I want diamonds. You just pulled Matt Olson? Nice. Yeah, I kinda I, I, I kinda assumed that you, you meant Olsen, so no worries. No worries. I got what you meant. Wow. Still no... Um, no diamonds. Yep, that's why I don't buy show packs anymore. I don't really give a damn. Because they don't, they don't offer me anything that's of value. These show packs are not worth are not worth uh, buying in these. Are not worth buying in the marketplace. They're really not. I guess I'm going to have to wait till the headliners packs to be able to get a chance at a diamond. Because so far, it doesn't, it's not looking good. But the good news is that we uh, I'm back up over 800,000. So that's a good sign.
All right, headliner packs it is. Let's see, you could get Adam Wainwright, that postseason card that makes me cringe every time. That fucking postseason card. Fucking Adam Wainwright. No six. Curveball right down the middle. Beltron looking at strike three. Good lord. Alright, so so far nothing in these head in these headliner packs, which is rather disappointing. Oh my gosh. What the heck? I am seriously gonna go through headliner packs without pulling a diamond. Son of a bitch. Alright, uh. Up! Oh. Eric Boy, you wanna, you wanna play me? Alright, we can play. Just give me a minute to finish up here. Oh, Christ. Alright, um, I don't know which one sells for the most. 6175, 9899. Alright, so 6198. Alright. Dang it! Got this fucking round again. Five eight nine nine. And then this. Nah, don't worry about it. It is what it is. Honestly, I could probably just sell just sell this. I could sell these cards because what why do I really need them? The collections are done. There aren't going to be any more collections. So I'm done with collections as far as I'm concerned. All right. Uh, so Eric boy, you wanted to play me. Let me go ahead and put my God squad here. Here it is. And actually, I'm going to put uh, Jorge Polanco here. See, uh, give him a shot. Alright, let's let's uh, let's play that game, Eric boy. Uh, what's your gamer tag again? I'm sorry, I, I've completely forgotten. Got it, 2K. Yes. Okay. There you are. Oh, did you want to be the home team or did you want me to or did you want me to send the challenge? Okay. All right. Uh Let's see. Okay, good. Let's do it. Best of luck. By the way, you're going up against my God Squad. So this is going to be right here. This is the debut of Ken Griffey Jr. All right, best of luck, Eric Boy.
Hmm. Not really getting good service. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Guess it's time to... Guess it's time to play. And Eric Boy, this is your debut with uh, Mookie, isn't it? Oh no! Oh, I thought who was it then that said they ju uh, they got um. They got Mookie. Yeah, you said you got Mookie while you were gone, so... Oh, you're saying you... Okay, this, this isn't his debut in terms of his online play. This is just the first time that I'm seeing... Okay, I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood. Strike three, sit down. Ooh, you hit really well with that Babe Ruth card. I'm going to have to be careful with this one. Tried that back door cutter, but it was not happening. Strike three, sit down. And you got the 99 Cole Hamels? Is this the... Wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. I just... Yeah, this is the 99 Hamels. So you grinded out BR for, for Hamels? Or did you just buy them? Alright, here he is. Debut for Ken Griffey Jr. See how he does. Oh, he's cracked! He's absolutely cracked! Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Ooh, nice. Nice, a nice curve there. Nearly got me. Oh, JD, get out, get out. Come on, stay fair, stay fair. Let's go, JD. A bullshit home run, but I'll take it. Let's 
sorry, sorry, Eric boy. I didn't, I didn't mean to shout like that. That's very unsportsmanlike of me, so I apologize. I just got a little too hyped up over JD. And now watch my uh, the, his act of revenge is going to be to to now hit a home run with Willie Mays here. Ooh, I left that cutter hanging. Strike three, sit down. Oh, good hit. Well, Griffey, let's see how your arm is. Ooh. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, I'm going to end stream uh, after this game. Because I usually only stream till 9. Oh, and you avoided him! Uh, if you can redeem it, then tomorrow you can play me. Absolutely. I just, I really won't have time tonight to be able to do a game. So, if you can... Nah? Okay. Figured that I'd, I'd give it a shot at least. Nope. Safe. I've heard a lot of people's... Oh, oh, this is a Vlad Guerrero Jr. card. I thought this was a Vlad Guerrero... It doesn't matter. He absolutely smoked it. See, I knew that act of revenge was coming. It just came in the form of a three-run shot by Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So that's what I get for gloating. Oh, you nice pitch. Right to Mantle. Right to him. That exists. The first baseman. All right, this is the debut of Jorge Polanco. People have said good things about him, so let's see how this goes. Yep.
Thank God that did not come back to bite me in the butt. It probably should have, but it didn't. And I'm thankful for that. Favorite pitcher of all time? Uh, it would have to be Tom Seaver, but Jacob DeGrom is really close. I mean, obviously, being a Mets fan, I would go with those two, but, you know, they really are great pitchers. Oh, player. Oh, player. I'm sorry. I thought it was pitchers. Uh, Mike Piazza, no doubt. Who do I think the best player all time is? I mean, you've got Ruth. Babe Ruth. I don't think there's any doubt that he's, he's, uh, um, you know, that he's a great player. You could argue for Willie Mays, uh, Jackie Robinson, um, Ken Griffey Jr., Derek Jeter. But I guess it, like, it, without, without, um, any bias, so... I'm not including Piazza in this. I think he's he's my favorite, but I would not say he's the best player of all time. I have to go with Babe Ruth. Ooh, good pitch. Bonds is top two. Center fielder, number 24. Um, see, the thing is, I'm just not, I, I'm not uh, too excited about the fact that he used steroids. That's the thing. The steroids have me. Sorry. Yes, but, you know, he still cheated. And how many of his home runs were because of the steroids? I mean, we can't easily prove that, but, you know, he jacked up a lot of home runs. So, I, I just, I'm not so eager to put players like Barry Bonds or Sammy Sosa or, or Mark McGuire near the top of my all-time players list because of because of uh, the steroids. You put Hank Aaron uh, in your top five? Alex Rodriguez? Yeah, true. Him too. But he did eventually clean up on it. He, uh, like, Definitely after the whole steroids thing, once he stopped using it, I really respect him, but his time using steroids, no respect there. Griffey top 10, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. But I would put Mike Piazza up in the... Um, 
in the top ten. Because he is one of the he is the greatest home run hitting catcher of all time. Now Cheater definitely has to be up there as well. Uh, let's see, who else? Now batting, catcher, JT, Real Utah. Trying to think who else. Trout. Trout certainly is the greatest. It's the greatest hitter of our generation. So I, I think you have to put Trout somewhere up there. Unfortunately, he just gets hurt a lot. But I think Trout deserves to be up there. Uh, let's see who else. Albert Pujols, Albert Pujols has to be up there as well. Uh, who else could be, who else could be, like, a top ten, um, hmm, Mickey Mantle, yeah, absolutely. Mickey Metal, Vladdy Jr. or Vladdy Vladdy Senior definitely up there. It's a little early on his son, but his but Senior, yeah, definitely, def he's definitely up there. Your attention, please. Pinch hitting. Jesse. And I'm sure the list uh, Kirby mm. One ball, two Okay, top fifty. I uh, I I I guess, but you're gonna. I put them right on the edge, like between 45th and 50th. Mariano Rivera. Yes, yeah, certainly one of the greatest closers of our generation. And I think if we're gonna include Mariano Rivera, we have to include Trevor Hoffman as well, and Billy Wagner. Uh, if you're talking like before the mid 2000s when he started to give up a lot more saves, I would agree. But towards the end of his career, when he started giving up a lot of saves or started blowing a lot of saves, that's where I kind of have to pump the brakes there. Ah, oh boy, big meat eight. Let's go. Another bullshit home run. I'm sorry that the... Well, true. And I guess Mariano at least won a World Series in, uh, towards the end of his career. I just... You know, he definitely, his, towards the end of his career, he definitely gave up a lot of 
up, uh, he gave up, or he started blowing a lot of saves. A lot more saves than I think people were used to. So. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Now coming to the big game, Matt Carpenter. Um, you know, if we're going to do top 50, this might be bias of me, but I do believe that David Wright deserves to be up there. If we're going top, uh, top 50. And I mean, are we including starting pitchers too? Because Tom Seaver has to be up there, as I'm sure Cy Young has to be, Bob Gibson as well. Nice. That's really awesome. Good for you, man. I Verlander, absolutely. Verlander, yep. Triple Crown winner and the first American League pitcher to win MVP when he did it in 2012. Well, since uh, I forget who. Nolan Ryan, absolutely. Greg Maddox. I think you could also throw in Tom Glavin in that as well. Bob Feller, yep. Lefty Grove. One ball, two strikes, Tim. Oh, that's off the plate. Do you, uh, okay, so do you guys consider, uh, do you guys consider Otani to be a pitcher, or do you consider Otani to be an outfielder? I mean, obviously he can play both, but like, if you had to, you'd want him as a pitcher. Okay, then I think he's got to be up there, because not many pitchers can hit like he can hit. If then if he were in the National League. He would easily be the most feared pitcher to hit against or to pitch against in the in the, in all of baseball. It just sucks that the um, American League has the DH, but I mean maybe we'll move to a move to a universal DH at some point. God, Griffey is getting the bat on the ball. He's just. Do I consider Babe Ruth a pitcher? Uh, Red Sox, yes. Um, Yankees, no. When he was with the Yankees, he was outfielder, so. All right, Gigi's, uh, Gigi's um, Eric boy. That was a good game. I had to leave for a little bit there, but you absolutely blasted with Vladdy Jr. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. But this is a really interesting conversation. You know, where do you where do you rank certain players? It, it really is something that's that can easily be debatable. And you know what? We didn't even mention Chipper, Chipper Jones. 
Wow, he's easily got to be in the top 50. Chipper, I can't believe we forgot Chipper. But, um, top 20. You're going to put, okay, I respect that. I think you're right about that. I think he's top 20. Um, but that this is a conversation we can continue tomorrow. So thank you to everyone who tuned in, even if it was only for a moment. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow me here on Twitch and or subscribe. Either one would make me a very happy person. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you turn... I hope that you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That way you know when I post my videos. And if you want to know when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter at JeffreyWarner3. The link is in the about page that's so underneath the stream here. So go check that out. I'll always tweet whenever I go live. You can also turn on notifications here on Twitch. That way Twitch sends you an email every time I start up a stream. Overall, we made good progress. We got, um, we got Shane Bieber. We made a lot more progress in the uh, towards Albert Pujols, so I'm excited to eventually get him. But, uh, you know, for right now, there's nothing that's planned tomorrow, so in all likelihood, I'm probably going to go back to the Super Fracturing series for the Mets. So unless something changes, I'll let you know if something changes. But for, for the most part, expect that to be tomorrow's stream. So I hope to see you there. 6 p.m. Eastern, and until then, guys, have a great night.